Welcome to the MNC PPC Department of Parks and Recreation celebration of National Nutrition Month. Throughout March, experience fun, interactive nutrition workshops and cooking demonstrations where you will get nutritional tools and explore ways to make healthier choices for the entire family. Be sure to share what you learned during this session with a friend or family member. Good evening, everyone, and welcome again. Thank you for joining us. My name is Yolanda Galloway. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of National Nutrition Month. Uh, and before we begin, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. First, I want to draw your attention to the mute button. The mute button is here to um, allow you to turn your microphone off or on. And we do ask that you uh, remain muted throughout the program just to eliminate any distractions uh, for tonight. Next, I want to draw your attention to the camera icon. Uh, the camera icon you see there with that arrow pointed there, that uh, icon allows you to turn your camera off or on. Um, you can decide to keep it on if you'd like or turn it off, but just remember that if your camera's on, we can see your screen and we want to just remember to uh, keep down any distractions so we can stay focused on the presentation that's going to be provided for us on tonight. Lastly, I want to draw your attention to our chat icon. The chat icon you see here with that arrow pointed to it on the screen here, it's square, but in the new version of Teams, it is a round circle. Uh, so this icon, once you click it, it will take you to what you see on the next screen. And that is the actual chat box. So what you'll do, you'll type in your comment or your question here in the chat box. Uh, we'll be able to see that you uh, type it in, you hit enter and we'll be able to engage with you through the chat feature. And our speaker for the evening uh, does watch the chat box and really enjoys using that to help engage with us throughout the evening. So without further ado, I'll introduce our speaker for the evening, Ms. Leslie Jefferson. Leslie is a certified nutrition specialist with a master's degree in nutrition and integrative health. She finds joy motivating others using a personalized nutrition approach emphasizing nutrient-dense foods. As a community health manager and nutritionist with Giant Food, Leslie cultivates innovative food as medicine programming and provides nutrition education lectures and classes. When it's time to relax, Leslie loves to line dance, travel, cook, and exercise with good hit videos. Welcome, Leslie, and welcome back, Leslie. Turn it over to you now. Oh, thank you so much. Happy to be here. Happy to be here and talk about breakfast. Oh my goodness, breakfast. It's, I think it's one of my biggest questions, especially what I eat for breakfast. If you um, have trouble with breakfast, put it in the chat. What are some of the things you experience uh, with that breakfast? Uh, it could be anything from boredom to too many choices. So uh, while I'm sharing my screen, I'm going to let you guys log in and get that chat going. What are some of the challenges with breakfast? Let's see. Let's start sharing. If I think I can share over the sharing. That's correct, Leslie. Okay. If you just do your share, gonna... it'll take over. Okay. Going on in with that. All right. Tired of eggs and oatmeal. Thank you for that, Drew. <laughs> Actually, eggs are one of my favorite things. That was my pandemic thing. How to make the perfect omelet. How to make the perfect omelet. That was my quest. Tired of granola bars. Well, this presentation is for you because there are no granola bars in this presentation. <laughs> there are some eggs and there's some oatmeal. So there might be some different ways for you to look at that. So in this presentation, we're also going to talk about the health benefits of a good breakfast. And we are, I'm not here to, to, you know, override anything from your physician. I realize we have multiple people on the call with different needs and different desires, different likes and different, you know, dislikes. So please keep in mind that these are recommendations and you can tweak them to your lifestyle and your taste. Right, so um, we're going to look at some recipes, and recipes are just a guideline, and you can tweak those things and add things in and take things out. So do you? That's what's most important. Uh, but take some of the concepts 
and some of the strategies that will be presented to heart so that you can then go in and start building your best breakfast. Eat plenty of rice cakes with peanut, I guess peanut butter and apple. And okay, I see some things coming through the chat. I know what we're working with. So thank you for sharing. So breakfast. I mean, it's we all heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, correct? And it is. It's pretty important because if you, folks who have generally eat breakfast um, in the morning, uh, they are generally have lower weight, have a lower instance of uh, chronic disease. Um, you know, there are things that are usually kind of a little better, a little more energized throughout the day. So when that occurs, um, you know, we usually feel better throughout the day and we feel better about ourselves. So breakfast is one of those meals that uh, is important, but I know during the pandemic, sometimes our breakfast times kind of shift and that has worried people uh, because we were used to getting up at the crack of dawn, jumping on the beltway and trying to make our way to work. And then we found at, while we were at home, maybe some of those times shifted a little bit for you. Uh, and you're like, oh, my goodness, I'm not eating breakfast in the standard time frame that breakfast should normally occur. But breakfast literally means breaking the overnight fast because overnight we're not eating. So I like for people to think of meals, your meals, not necessarily meal times. This is where a little difference comes in. Just because it's your first meal of the day does not mean you are confined to certain types of food. There's no breakfast police coming to your house to tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, you're not having oatmeal and it's your first meal of the day or breakfast. But you're not confined to any particular types of food. Free yourself from that. You can have whatever you want as your first meal of the day. So if we take the label off of breakfast, it opens up a whole new world of food. So keep that in mind. You know, it's the first meal of the day and all foods fit. Oh, isn't that great? Doesn't that make you feel looser and make you feel like you've got something else you can look forward to for that first meal of the day? So even though I am calling it the first meal of the day, it's still considered breakfast, I understand, and I may use those terms interchangeably. But no matter what time you have your first meal of the day, you can try something new. Try different and new ways to put some of those same foods together. Even a little bit of dinner for breakfast. No, it's not too late. Um, we all have different clocks, you know, our stomachs. So when we um, listen to that in our timing, again, you may used to have gotten up at 5 a.m. so you could get to work by 9. But if now your body has changed and adapted to a new way of working or you're newly retired and things are kind of switching up a little bit, your body lets you know when you're hungry. Always listen to your body's cues. There's there's no, you know, written rule that says breakfast, first meal of the day, has to be at 7 a.m. If you're not hungry at 7 a.m., you shouldn't have feel like you should be forced to eat. Listen to your body's cues. Because in some cultures, breakfast includes a variety of things like fish, rice, beans. And this National Nutrition Month this, uh, is about uh, global flavors, uh, international flavors, worldly flavors. So trying uh, to eat in a different way and having more savory foods, which generally are better for our blood sugar, uh, 
that lets us have a little bit more variety in the way we look at our first meal of the day or our breakfast um, and actually the foods that we're choosing by going a more savory route. So what do I mean by that? So we want to eat a balanced plate always. So when you're having your first meal of the day, no matter how you're trying to compose your plate, you want to think of it in terms of our balance, making sure you have a good quality protein on the plate, good quality carbohydrate on the plate, and good quality fat. Because those are our macronutrients. So for those of you that have been on calls before, uh, is an apple a carb? What do we think? Put it in the chat. Is an apple a carb? Apples, are they carbs? Let me think about this. Someone says yes. Do we agree with Tangela? Ooh, Drew says yes. Mm-hmm. Apples are carbs. Now, what about broccoli? Is broccoli a carb? Broccoli. Ooh, broccoli. And broccoli for breakfast? Yes, broccoli for breakfast. Kathy says, yes, they have sugar. Tangela is back. She says, yes. Yes, broccoli is a carb. And they do have sugar, both of them. They have carbon, carbon, which breaks down to glucose. They just have different construction of, of those fibers, right? Fiber is what we're looking for, and our carbohydrates give us fiber. Apples, broccoli. Even our grains, our grains give us fiber also. So when we're talking about a plant-forward diet, if we utilize the balanced plate, three-fourths of our plate is considered plant-forward. Yep, lots of vitamins, lots of minerals. That's what we want on our plate. So when you're looking down on your plate, no matter which meal it is, but we're talking about breakfast, you want to try to get those good carbohydrates in, some quality grains, fruits and vegetables, that is three-fourths of your plate would then construct, be constructed with carbohydrates and high fiber. That's what we want. Lots of fiber on the plate. And then we want our second macronutrient, which is protein. Protein on the plate helps you feeling full and satisfied. And when you pair that with the fiber from the carbohydrate, you really feel full and satisfied and you don't get those munchies throughout the day. Have you ever just walked out of the door with just a, bang, a bagel or a donut or just an apple and then you're hungry 30 minutes later? Because of, you know, not so much, there's there's maybe fiber in that apple, but the sugars spike your blood sugar. Yes, spike your blood sugar, and then you crash and you're looking for food again. That protein and the high fiber help to balance things out so you don't feel hungry as fast. You feel satisfied. And then in addition to that, our third macronutrient are fat. So we need those in our diet. They are much maligned, but fats are very important. Um, there are only three macronutrients, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So that is what our another um, uh, item that our body uses as energy. Hmm. What is happening? <laughs> Stop. Stop doing that. Whoever did that. <laughs> okay, I need to go back. Okay, here we go. So with that, uh, we want our fats in our diet so that it helps to balance out everything and it helps our body absorb nutrients. So fats are important. And then I like to throw in water. That's what I call the fourth of macronutrient. That's not the sciencey thing. That's just the Leslie thing. But I like to throw water in there because it's very important for our bodies. Our, I mean, 
we would expire within three to four days without water, um, but we could go a lot longer without those other macronutrients. So when you create a balanced plate, also include the most important beverage, which is water, uh, along with other things like coffee and tea. That's okay, too. Some examples of fat in regards to food or in, in regards to your meal. So fats are um, fatty acids. So your different uh, fats are like your avocado, avocado oil, um, yogurt has fat, dairy has fat. Um, yeah. And you want quality fat. So we're going to dive a little deeper. So hold on to that. Because we're going to do the label reading. So when we're looking at the label, uh, what are some what are some of the first things that you guys like to look at on the food label? What's the first thing that you you're drawn to and that's most important to you? Put it in the chat. Let me see what you guys are looking for and looking at. Salt. Serving size and calories, sugar content, calories. Now, the biggest thing on this food label are the calories. So you know they want to draw your eye there. I see sodium coming up is pretty popular as well as the sugar. So all of those things are important, very much so. But one of the most important things on this food label and someone said it, they get a they get a ding ding ding, is the serving size. Serving size is the first sure. thing sure. to look at. I'm gonna go back to eating. Bye. So, bye bye. Okay. So if someone is looking for ways that a food can impact their health, one of the first places to look is serving size because this is what all the other numbers on the food label are referring to. So the important thing is oh, things keep changing. <laughs> uh, okay, so the important things are. Sorry, I just my screen just shifted. Um, okay, so the important thing on the on the food label is. Uh, to make sure you're checking your serving size versus your portion. And your portion could change depending on your health needs. You know, a marathon runner may need more of a portion of some, a larger portion than someone who's trying to lose weight. So that is something that you can, uh, you need to check for your own wellness goals, what your portion is. Okay, what is happening? <laughs> So sorry, my screen keeps doing strange things. Okay, so um, so your portion size is very important. So your portion may be three cups of an item, but all of these numbers refer to only two thirds of a cup. So you need to do some multiplication to make sure that that food still fits within your goal. So when we're looking at an item that has 230 calories and we say, yes, 230 calories works for me, make sure that you go, but how am I going to eat this item? How will I choose to eat this item? What will my portion look like? Well, my portion might be three cups. Okay, so now let's do the math to make sure that that item still fits in your wellness goal. So the next thing we're going to take a peek at as we go down and know why that's important for your wellness goals is the daily uh, values. So we're just going to use the quick down and dirty percentages for this presentation and know that 5% of the daily value or less of that saturated fat, especially if we're talking about heart health, if we're talking about um, some weight loss, depending on where you are in your weight loss journey as well as 5% or less of sodium. So we want to make sure those numbers fall in the right spot for our goals. 
And then additionally, fiber is very important. So we talked about that with our carbohydrates. They're high in fiber. We want that in our diet. So when you're looking at things that have fiber that come in boxes or bags and include a nutrition facts label, you're looking for about 10% or more of fiber in, in the item per serving. So we're looking for about two grams plus of fiber in an item. Okay. Any questions on the food label? I'm going to pause there because sometimes they're not so fun, and I realize that. <laughs> but note your portion size, note the ser serving size, and that can help start help you make decisions about the foods that you're choosing. Additives and chemicals, oh, definitely. Yeah, that's not necessarily this part of the build your best breakfast presentation, but you're absolutely right. You know, the your food if you have too many ingredients and the ingredient list is, you know, this long, you may want to, you know, consider if that's the right item for you. Yeah, they, they play a role, additives in your food, definitely. Try to have things you understand. Is added sugar in addition to carbs included? Yeah, so in your total carbohydrate, total carbohydrate contains the fiber, the natural sugar, and the added sugar. So if you just want to skip right to it, your total carbs is really the number that you should look for. And always you're right on time with that question. And remember, 5% for any one of these, these daily recommended values is considered low and 20% is considered high. So you may want to say, whoa, the added sugar is here, 20%, that's high. Or you may want to say, eh, well, I can kind of deal with the 13% overall total carbs. It just depends on where you are in your wellness journey. But that is a, a way that you can look at the food label so you can, oh, you can't see the slide? What happened? Hmm. Somehow I got in spotlight, so... I didn't put myself there. I'm going to exit this spotlight, and then maybe you can see the slide. You only see me. Okay, somehow I got put in this. Thank you for that, because I would never have known. Oh, now I'm no longer spotlight. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I need to move the banner. Okay. So hopefully you can see the slide. Let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you can see the stuff slide. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So somehow I got on this spotlight. I didn't do it. Okay. You can see both. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So 5% is low and 20% is high. That means you missed my cute animation. Dang. <laughs> but remember, when you're reading this, um, for those carbs, as you can see, 20% sugar here. Uh, but and then overall... The sugars here, the total carbs are pretty high for the two-thirds of a cup. And it depends on your goals. Again, a marathon runner may want those carbs because they need to run. They need to do things. But if you're trying to go for glucose control, you may go, ooh, I need to be careful of that particular item. So it just depends on where you Oh, we're going to get the smoothies. Don't worry. <laughs> I got you on the smoothie. 5% is low, 20% is high. Okay, let's move forward. So if you're ever in Giant, because that's who I work for, and you're like, okay, these food labels, I know she explained them. I know what I'm supposed to look for, but I just can't figure it out. It's just too much. I don't have time, and I don't feel like putting the effort in. We do have Guiding Stars, and you'll see it on the shelf tag next to the price. One, two, or three stars. Of course, three stars means it's the most, it's great for nutrition. If there are no stars, that means, yeah, probably not doing a lot for you in the nutrition area. So look for the stars if you feel as though you're, um, you're confused as to whether or not the item will meet your wellness goals. No stars, not so much for the healthy part of, the, of your meal. So. 
we're going to do a little exercise to kind of drill in this portion control and to to get you thinking about the uh, your favorite uh, item. So what are some of your favorite cereals? Put it in the chat, and then this can help you when you next time you're in the store and you look for the stars or helps you with reading the food labels on certain items, especially cereal. Cereal is one of those things that we never measure. We just pour it in the bowl. Some people measure. I know there's probably one, two people on the call that probably measure their cereal. But if you actually go after the presentation to your cabinet, pull down a box of cereal, read the serving size, and then do a test. Pour your normal cereal in the bowl, your normal way, and then measure it and compare it to the serving size. All right, we're going to look at some stars for this. So we got one star for two kind of cereals that we should think are pretty healthy, but why would you think these would only get one star? Why do you think they only get one star? Give you the answer in three, two, sugar. Yes, these have sugar, but what could they possibly be higher in? They could be higher in what? than some other cereals. And this is one question that it starts with an F and you, you could never say it enough in a presentation. Fiber, 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 yes. So they're high in fiber. So that's that label balancing, right? You may have a little bit too much sugar, but you got some more fiber. So things, so there's no perfect food. I know everybody wants you to think there's perfect food other than broccoli. Broccoli is probably perfect food. <laughs> but that balance, you have to make those decisions, right? So still get the star, it's okay. And so you could eat it and it's good, but you probably wanna watch your portion with these particular items. Okay, we're gonna go in again, two star items, two star items, honey bunches of oats. Yep, they have oatmeal with no sugar. You could just get plain oatmeal and add your own, right? That's the best way to go. But people want convenience, you know? That's why we have lots of people on the call. We have a wide range of cooking and, you know, people who like to cook, people don't want to cook, people want things fast. So our Cheerios come in at two stars. So we're getting up there a little bit. Honey bunches of oats, two stars. More fiber. Probably a little protein. I think they have nuts and things like that. So what do we think our three-star cereal is? The most healthy, the most healthy. You probably will never guess. I've only had one person ever guess the three-star cereal. So I am going to just click the button. It's Grape Nuts. Woo -woo. <laughs> now I know I had some faces that turned under and went, oh, Grape Nuts, I can't eat that. I just be ew. I knew it. Great nuts. But I want you to go next time you're in the store, whenever store you shop in, I want you to pick up a box of Cheerios and I want you to pick up a box of grape nuts and see the difference in the weight. Because that's where you can feel the nutrient density of the food. And you can use your grape nuts in many different ways, toppings on salads a topping on your yogurt, a topping on your oatmeal. So you don't necessarily have to have it in a bowl. We're thinking about things in different ways. So it can add fiber to your diet, but doesn't have to be a big bowl of cereal. Give it, give it a try. And you can use it in many different ways. As a, Instead of nuts, for people who are, because even though it's called grape nuts, uh, it doesn't have nuts in it, per se. If you have an allergy and you want something crunchy, it's a good way to add that. So here are some cereals that have no stars. <gasps> if you have any of these in your cabinet, look at the portion. Think about your portion and look at the serving size. And then if your numbers aren't where they want, where you want them to be, you may want to consider altering that the way you eat this particular food. No good or bad foods. 
It's just the way we eat them. And if they fit our wellness goals. All right, so let's keep moving. Because fiber equals energy. So we want to have that in our diet. I cannot stress that enough. Most people only get seven, eight, max 15 grams of fiber a day. We need like 25 grams of fiber in our diet. So it's very important. Quick and easy ways to get fiber are chia seeds, flax seeds, those types of things sprinkled on things in the morning it would be wonderful ways to add in additional fiber. And that fiber also helps bring in that B vitamin so we can have that energy we're looking for in the morning. Remember, the people who eat breakfast feel more energized throughout the day. That's because of those B vitamins. And B vitamins from food is a lot more... Um, it's absorbed a lot better from food than from vitamins, because I know people take vitamins to get their B vitamins. But try it with food. That's those whole grains, leafy greens in every meal get you lots of B vitamins. So we want to make sure we're looking for whole grain stamp to make sure that we are getting whole grain. So you'll find that on bread. You'll find it on different cereals. Uh, so we want those whole grains. But just be mindful that different um, items have different levels of whole grains. So some things may say 100% or it might be 50%, or you might have to read the fine print to, how much, to find out how much. <laughs> so we want to be mindful of that. So fruits, vegetables, and grains as our first meal of the day, very beneficial to the body. Some other options, things like um, good old applesauce, quick and easy. You can add it to different things as a sweetener instead of sugars. Um, frozen vegetables, um, you know, you can use a little leftover dinner uh, and the vegetables. You can use frozen fruit. You can use fresh fruit, uh, things to make uh, uh, your meal quick and easy. Ah. Well, I don't know. We do have, uh, well, the one thing is, is that the body, the question is, if you're not reading the chat, is how come you can't, you can go all day if you don't eat, but then if you eat, you're hungry. And that has a lot to do with your blood sugar, blood sugar fluctuations. So you can have an up and a crash. And it depends on what you eat. So lots of things. We offer consultation. You can get a consult for free. And we can really dive deep into what you're doing. Then I can probably answer the question a little better. Because some people may not eat all day and then they're hungry. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it really depends. I would need to know what you eat. So things like oatmeal, very filling, very, and someone mentioned tired of oatmeal. A different way is like a small energy bite. You can make those. Uh, that's a different way to look at oatmeal instead of hot and in a bowl and, you know, standard, standard. Uh, just explore different ways to eat some of the foods that you love. Because the other part of this is adding in protein. So it's important to add in a protein, either via protein powder or some sort of animal protein or plant-based protein, however you like it. Someone mentioned earlier, tired of eggs, you know, those eggs, things like yogurt. Um, we're going to blend that in and call it dairy. So all of those things can be helpful to help to keep yourself feeling full throughout the day. So just an egg, you may get hungry. Um, just an apple, you may get hungry. But if you have egg and apple, you might not get as hungry throughout the day. So it depends on how you're pairing things. So we always want to pair the protein and fiber together at the meal. Try not to run out the door with just a bagel or just an apple or just a banana. Because the protein is also helping with the building blocks and health of your body. It also helps keep you full and satisfied. 
All right, I'm gonna pause. Okay, so we talked earlier about savory. Maybe a savory breakfast is um, something that, you know, most uh, countries of the world, they have savory breakfast. They don't have a sweet breakfast. Um, but if you add spice to some of the same old, same old, uh, just by changing up the different flavors, you can add some variety to some of the same breakfast item, and it helps to reduce sodium. Mm hmm Yep. Scrambled egg, adding spinach, carrots, peppers, tomatoes. You can keep layering that on, and you get the vegetables in, and and it's very helpful. That's what I had this morning. I had um, I was kind of boring this morning. I had um, spinach and eggs. That was that was me. Yeah, carrots and eggs. Mother Nature made it. Mother Nature, you could put it together. Don't limit yourself. Love that carrots and eggs. Um, so you can take that same scrambled egg mixture and then add different flavors to it. You can add a little garlic. You can add, you know, a little cayenne. You can make it different so it doesn't taste the same. And one of my favorites is, uh, two of my favorites on here are the pumpkin pie spice, especially for those that are tired of oatmeal. Or um, because pumpkin pie spice is a simple and easy way to get the spice blend of all those wonderful flavors that we love because it has cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, allspice. And so it's all in there and it gives you that wonderful flavor without a lot of work. Sometimes I'm a lazy cook. And then if you're trying to get um, some looking at your weight, you're trying to, or you're a vegan, or you um, like a lot of teas, but you're watching cholesterol, the nutritional yeast is a great way to uh, add cheesiness to your meal, the cheesy flavor. And also it's very high in the B vitamins. Yep, roast your vegetables. Take a little bit of last night's dinner and add it in there. So here's some, oh, and I forgot to send this. I'll make sure I send this um, handout so that you can have um, different spice blends. Make them at home. Keep them on the cabinet. Uh, so that, Keep them in the cabinet so you can have it available. All right. So for the folks on the call that don't want to cook a lot and don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, you can create fast meals um, just by using wonderful, helpful items that are partially prepared. Now, I want to pause here just to talk a little bit about grains. Grains are very important. And then you think about um, cereal. They are made out of pressed grains, pressed grains. So one thing you can do is start making, you know, kind of cereal blends with plain rice, right? Think about Rice Krispies. What are they? They are baked rice. <laughs> so the rice splits and pops because it's been kind of toasted, it's been baked, but it's rice. So we take our cereal flakes and we use the grains, oats, wheat, uh, different grains, and we press them together, bake them or toast them, and now they become crunchy um, uh, grains. So you could take a little bit of plain quinoa, mix some you know, nuts and cranberry with it, a little coconut milk, and you can make like a little, you know, like a little porridge. You could have it hot or cold. That offers some uh, option. Uh, and something, uh, just a different way to look at some of the grains you may have left over. If you prepare them plainly and not in a dinner fashion, you can always scoop some out and then flavor them um, on the side. So it's just a different way to look at things. Uh, things like the broccoli slaw, fantastic in every one of my presentations because it's quick and easy. So you want to make an omelet, you want to scramble some eggs. You can just take that a broccoli slaw, pour it in your pan, and stir it in there. You want to make a smoothie. You don't want to cut up a bunch of vegetables. You can pour that in there. Uh, you want to make an egg uh, casserole, pour that in there, pop it in the oven. So lots of different ways that you can use the broccoli slaw. 
eggs that are already boiled. There are apples that are already sliced. <laughs> and you can use your frozen um, aromatics like um, frozen onions and frozen peppers for a quick omelet scramble. So different ways to use uh, lots of the items in the, in the grocery store as a convenience uh, to make quick, easy meals. And if you have any quick, easy ways that you like to use certain foods, put it in the chat and share with others so that, you know, just like someone's putting carrots in their eggs, you know, share what you're doing so others can learn from you. All right, let's pop in the kitchen. Look at some ways we can make these breakfasts a little more interesting because we want to put um, it all together and we want to have use that plate as a guide right not necessarily you know rice protein you know it doesn't have to be that it can be a, a blend but your poor portion of each area should be have that in mind okay so and you also need some tools to make it fast right your microwave is a great way to make breakfast uh, having little uh, sheet pan, um, uh, little muffin tins are a great way. You can do some meal prep with egg batters or uh, little, someone said they were tired of granola bars. You can make little muffins and put those in the oven and pull those out. Um, you know, casseroles that you can make and have available in the refrigerator. Uh, you can even make your own breakfast sausage with you know, if you want to do ground turkey, take some ground turkey, a little maple syrup, um, and some sage or poultry seasoning, make a little patty, put it in the oven, and you've got turkey breakfast sausage. Yep, you can do that. <laughs> so think about tools that you have at home and ways that you can kind of tweak what you're currently doing so you can add that variety into your diet. So first up, simple and easy toaster. Get a toaster waffle. This one is a whole grain toaster waffle. And you can have those frozen berries and a little peanut butter. Keep it simple. It doesn't have to. That's for my folks that don't want to cook. I don't want to cook. I don't like to cook. You can use sunflower butter and those sliced apples I mentioned earlier. Get out that cinnamon, and now you got a different flavor profile going on. All right. Toast. Okay. You don't want to buy the, the waffle. That's fine. Get some whole grain toast, and you can use cream cheese, you could use your uh, peanut butter, you can use, then chop up that fresh apple or pear, sprinkle on a little bit of that, uh, those great nuts on top, right? And then you have that, you can change this up depending on the fruit that you're purchasing in, the, in your home, and you can make it different each time. So yes, you can have toast, there's nothing wrong with good quality toast. We want it to be whole grain toast. And we want to add high fiber options. Chia seeds would also be great here. Black seed would also be great sprinkled on top. They have pomegranate here, which is high in fiber, but pomegranate isn't available all the time. So now we have to kind of tweak the recipe to make it for things that we um, have in the house. Yes, avocado toast. You could take avocado and spread it on. Add some tomatoes and leafy greens, a little bit of leftover last night's broccoli. You can add an egg. This is avocado toast. You can smoke salmon if that's your thing, or a little bit of last night's chicken with a little bit of that um, spinach that you had for dinner. First meal of the day. First meal of the day, not necessarily breakfast food, okay? You have many options with this here. And to fight food waste, 
How many times have you gone in your refrigerator and threw away something from last night or the two nights ago that you didn't eat? You could have had that as your first meal of the day. Food waste. First meal of the day is a great way to get rid of that because a lot of times we don't have a lot of time and we need something quick. All right. That's another whole grain item. And we are still using the my plate. We've got toast. We've got um, we've got some fruit there. Our protein is our spread, whatever our spread would be. We've got a good quality fat in there also. So it's a good way to utilize the plate. Okay, so overnight oats is one thing that I like to make for my person who doesn't like oatmeal. So I already started. I have my little container. I love this little container. I have my yogurt on the bottom. That's my choice. I like yogurt. And I have my oats with a little bit of flaxseed mixed in there and a second layer with some apples. Simple and easy. So I use, um, this is um, like tantalo juice with a little bit of water. You could use oat milk. You could use almond milk, whatever your choice is. You could use plain water. But I like the little, um, what are it, halos, halos. I like the juice of a halo to adds the sweetness. I'm just going to pour it in. Hopefully I don't pour it all over myself. Don't laugh at me. There we go. Pour it on in there, and I'm going to stir that up. And then I'm going to let it sit in the refrigerator. And that's my overnight oats. That's probably what I'll have as a first meal of the day. Oh, maybe a snack. We'll see. See how that goes. But I could put it in the microwave after it sits, or I can eat it cold. But I like to eat it cold. The chia seeds make it nice and uh, creamy because they have that. They they gel, so it's kind of cool. It's like a little pudding. I like. And you can adjust this particular um, recipe to your taste, to your consistency. It's a recipe, so you can play with it as you like. And another good fat, because someone asked about fats, you have the avocado, you have nut butters. Nuts have great fat and protein. Now, this is one of my favorites. So we purchased Special K with strawberries and walnuts and so on and so forth. Why can't we just have a salad? Why can't you just have a salad? Someone has a roasted vegetables and make a pizza with cauliflower crust. That's fantastic. And it will be a great first meal of the day. So you can take, you know, the spinach that you would have thrown in your eggs. You can even have those boiled eggs. Uh, it just depends on how you want it constructed. But you can have a nice, beautiful, sweet cereal in the morning with a little bit of um, spinach, some strawberries, some nuts, that wonderful, sweet balsamic vinaigrette. And instead of having cereal, now you have a, a very high uh, nutrient-dense breakfast. You can even add a little chicken to it if you like. All right, keeping it moving. So now we're going into that real leftover world, right? So we might have a little rice in our refrigerator, some extra vegetables. You can use some of those roasted vegetables you have. Ms. Bonin, you could do that. Um, and then you can scramble it all together with a little egg, and you've made a nice little uh, fried rice. And you have that for breakfast. You can even use the egg whites if you like. And it's a good spot for those um, frozen uh, aromatics also that we, that we talked about earlier. A little leftover shrimp from last night's dinner. Throw that in there and you've got a really quick meal. All right, that microwave, we can use that to make mug muffins. It's kind of fun. And if you have kids, it's a great way to uh, get something sweet. Uh, and you can add in the fruit. You can add in the fruit as you like. And you mix it all up in the cup. And then you pop it in the microwave. And I've done this a couple times. 
Um, just be careful of the amount of flour you use. Depending on your humidity, it could come out sometimes a little dense, but it's a cool, cool way to make a quick muffin. And you can even split it and share it and instead of pancakes or but you could use different types of flour, like whole wheat flour, if you like, add some chia and flax to get that fiber up. And it's a, a really fun and quick way to make a little muffin for yourself. You can even add like chocolate chips and, you know, have some fun with that. Do bananas and strawberries. Very cool little recipe. All right. So here's another one for the big oven. It's a breakfast casserole. So you can utilize, um, there's another way for those eggs. Someone mentioned they're tired of eggs. So you could take uh, a little bit of that. Let's say you made uh, turkey burgers or hamburgers the night before. You can take a little bit of that leftover hamburger meat. You can go in and make your casserole, beat it up, and then pop it in the oven. And you can have that as a brunch, uh, for, especially for the weekend. Uh, you can make different flavors with it. This one, I've um, switched it out, added that broccoli slaw in with a little taco seasoning, if you have that at home. And now it's got a whole different flavor. So you can decide and tweak the recipe so that it, is, it doesn't become boring. And one of my favorites, uh, and I know a few folks on the call know that I love sweet potatoes in the morning. I call them the muffin of the vegetable world. Sweet potatoes can be stuffed with anything. Uh, you can make it your own. And the thing is, is that you can have sweet potatoes in the oven roasting, and you can have a bunch of them lined up. And all through the day, uh, through the week, you could go through and stuff them with goodies and enjoy a wonderful and filling first meal of the day. So someone asked about smoothies. Very, very, very important to, you know, getting some ve vegetables in for some people because they just don't like vegetables. And that's fine. Smoothies are a great way to get those vegetables in. And I do a lot longer presentation on smoothies, and you're going to get a little bit of it. But how many people have a blender or a bullet that looks like this? It's just packed full of stuff. It's just packed. I mean, you just got, you got to, you know, stuff it down so that the blender will, uh, will blend it on up. Because we really don't want to have our blender packed to the max. You can have too much of a good thing. So if you are having like a lot of smoothies and you have certain weight goals and that needle just isn't moving either way, you may want to check to see what's going in your smoothie and maybe kind of pull back a little bit. Because we only need a few items and it's still healthy. More does may not necessarily make it better, um, but you can always alternate. Right? You can have a smoothie this day made like this, and then you take some of those other items and make it like this. If you find that your goals, you're not meeting your goals, you may want to check how your smoothie is being constructed. So simple ingredients like using dates as a sweetener instead of honey or agave, you know, your leafy greens in every smoothie, a little acid helps to bring up the flavor. You know, small amount of um, of your fruit, uh, max two fruit in, in your smoothie. Uh, here we have mango and banana and, and a little bit of milk, water, uh, nut milk, whatever your choice is in that regard. This is a smoothie for two people. So we also want to make sure that our smoothies are like a balanced plate also. And we don't want to overdo it. Because, you know, we want two half cups to equal like a cup maximum of fruit per serving of smoothie. Uh, and watch where added sugars can come in because that's where your smoothies can kind of disrupt your health goals. 
You know, what types of liquids are you using? Is there sugar in your protein powder? Are you using yogurt? Is there sugar in that? There's already natural sugars in some of those items. And remember that sugar is sugar. Um, so no matter if it's agave or raw or, you know, honey, it's still, it's glucose when you swallow it. Your body says, oh, more glucose. It it doesn't say, oh, this is the organic agave that was purchased you know, for $500, I'm going to treat it differently. Your body just digests it. <laughs> so be mindful of that. And also be mindful of the hidden fat. So we, some folks tend to put, you know, nut butters and then chia and then flax and then walnuts. All of those are fats and they can uh, contribute to a higher caloric value in the smoothie. So nothing wrong with those things. It's just making sure you don't overdo it in your smoothie. So when we have our smoothies, we want to make it creamy. Uh, we could add frozen fruit. Uh, things like uh, frozen cauliflower, actually, is one of the best ways to get a creamy smoothie outside of an avocado. Um, adding white beans for fiber and not bunches of it. You just need like a tablespoon. It doesn't change the taste of your smoothie. Soaking your oats also can make a nice, um, a tablespoon of soaked oats can make a nice creamy smoothie. And if you prefer your smoothies frosty, you can add more ice after you've blended it up and that makes it a little bit more frosty. You can also, um, freeze your greens in ice cubes. And then when you add those, it helps to make it a lot more frosty. But I love this picture here because it basically shows small amount of greens, a good portion of berries, you know, a protein and some ice. You don't need a lot to have a healthy smoothie. So here's one that's our kid friendly and adult friendly. It has spinach and um, plant-based or regular milk. Uh, it has uh, some berries in there, but I really like to point out that the serving size is four glasses in this recipe, four glasses. So we want to be mindful of how much smoothie we're taking in too, because they do contribute to our um, calories as well as our glucose numbers. All right, that's my time. I want to be mindful of yours. You can feel free to take a picture of any of these QR codes if you're interested in listening to a podcast, uh, if you want to join a class, uh, or if you just want to have more information about the services that Giant Nutrition offers. You can always uh, reach out to us. You can join our Facebook group. Uh, we have a lot of fun on there. There's a lot of good information. If you want to reach out to me directly, I am leslie.jefferson at giantfood.com. Uh, and I am happy to help you with any of your nutrition questions. And I'm going to stop presenting. Thank you, Leslie. And while you're doing that, a question came up in the chat. What is the Facebook group? What is the Facebook group? What do you mean? Um, so I know you shared before. I'm thinking what they're thinking. I'm, I'm interpreting what they're thinking about. I know you shared a Facebook group that people can join. Maybe it's a giant. Yeah. For One of those. Oh, yeah. I closed the there. QR code. Yeah. It's the QR code contained the Healthy Living by Giant Facebook group. That's the name. I'll type type it in. Healthy living, healthy living by giant Facebook group. FB group. Healthy. And um, it's really cool. You have the QR codes now, so that's new. <laughs> that's really easy. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I can send that slide to you, and then you can have it if you want to include it in your um, email. Sure, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Breakfast, the most important meal of the day, right? So thank you for that. Good tips, good um, good uh, engagement. Thank you all for your questions and providing your comments. 
Um, before we let you go for the evening, just a few announcements. We want your feedback. So please complete um, the survey that we'll send you following the program um, for a chance to win a $25 gift card. Uh, if you want the recording, it is available upon request, and you can send an email to wellness at pgparks.com to request the recording. And then we'd love to have you join us as we continue our celebration of National Nutrition Month on this Thursday, March the 3rd from 6 to 7, and it will be a cooking demonstration, and we will be um, seeing the brown rice pasta and the broccoli stir fry um, be prepared by Chef Ross. So we'd love to have you join us. And again, we thank you, and we have just a quick good night video, and then we'll see you next time. Hope you all have a good evening. Thank you for joining us for National Nutrition Month. For more videos to help you make healthier choices, visit the Department of Parks and Recreation's online resource center at pgparks.com or the Health and Wellness Virtual Library at wellness.pgparks.com. Until next time, be healthy, be well.